Hey everybody, Ethan here and you're on my side of the room. Today I want to talk about a new piece of equipment I picked up, but first a little bit of backstory. Um, first and foremost, if you look back on the videos I've put up, or if you're a regular viewer of this channel, you know that I used to have a pedal called a Kaleen Wine Cellar. Uh, but what I've been doing lately is uh, getting rid of things that aren't relevant, and that was one of the things that didn't make the cut as far as staying relevant. Um, but I was seeing our favorite local band recently, and they were playing in a venue where I was able to just walk up to the stage and look at their rig, like up close, which I normally can't do. And I noticed the bass player, instead of a fractal or a helix or whatever like he would normally use, had gone the way of the dinosaur and been replaced with a Tech 21 bass DI. Like, okay. Then he's running that to a mark base. Like, what are you doing? Because <laughs> it'd be kind of like, again, running a DI box to my heart key. Like, my heart key kind of is my DI box as it has XLR out. And if I need to run a DI signal, I can just do that off of that. So, redundant much? <laughs> and looking at it on Amazon, I could see that the base DI had a little more to it than just say like three knobs, but um, it's just not the kind of thing where it, it didn't seem particularly practical to constantly be stooping down and twiddling with knobs or whatever. But uh, I talked to the bass player during one of the breaks and he liked it. He gave me his rationale for why he had it. And part of why he had it was what I thought was the case is they were a band that tends to play direct to the PA a lot. Um, and rather than futz around with a fractal or similar, he was just like, I can just get it done with this DI box and I don't see why I need this bigger piece of equipment to lug around. So he did that. Okay. So, I'm looking at the base DI, I'm thinking about getting it, put it in my Amazon cart, and then I'm looking at YouTube as I often do, and it decided I needed this. <laughs> So what you're looking at is called a DSM and Humboldt simplifier for the bass. Um, now, I'm sure you're wondering from the outset, you're wondering, are you sponsored? No, I'm not sponsored. Uh, this is with my own money, one, one more time with my own money here. Uh, but how is this simple? <laughs> Well, it actually does simplify things, but it does it in ways that aren't immediately obvious. So I'm not going to do tone demos off of this. There's people who have done it better than I do or could or would. Uh, so I'm going to put them in the description. I normally don't link other channels because I just, sometimes I really don't want to like make it about the gear in such a way that I'm just talking about some kind of specific thing about it but not the gear but this time just to be fair to everybody if you want to know more about it i'll put it in the description you can go find out there's no affiliate links i'm not making any money i'm just passing on the wisdom all right so here's an example of how this simplifies things this switch right here can shortcut your tone between in fact, they call it speaker color. Bright, modern, and warm. Well, the place you've seen this before without seeing it before was the Schechter bass that I was lusting after a long time ago before I soured on it. <laughs> but it had one of these kind of switches. In fact, I think it was kind of like this kind of switch on the bass to color the sound. And it was things like bright, warm, and funky or whatever. I don't know what their three words were, but it was three things you could dial up. And, okay. <laughs> uh, but then the next thing it's got is another dip switch here where you can do cabbage simulations. <laughs> and then the next thing you can do is the, the blend itself about what's your low pass. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like what's your frequency for your low pass filter, if any, up to none. And then you've got a preamp in the style of Ampeg. It's not an Ampeg preamp, it's in the style of Ampeg, as an example. Um, I can set, I can simulate the mic placement 
I can set the resonance. I can decide like how much blend of the cab am I doing. I can do gain. I can do uh, parallel or preamp preference as far as like what my sound favors. I've got two XLR outs, basically clean and dirty. I've got phones out if I really want. <laughs> Actually, not phones out. I'm so sorry. This is the actual input. <laughs> that makes more sense. There's a quarter inch output that can either be a through or a just a straight up out. You can change the phase to normal or inverted with this switch. And I think I had to do inverted for some reason, like it sounded better. Um, I've got dip switches on the back for whether or not I'm using active or passive pickups. I've got stuff on the back about if I want to do ground or lift, just like a DI box would have. I've got sends for the parallel and sends for the preamp. So if I wanted to run something that like distortion, I could do it over here. And if I want to run something like reverb, I could do it over here and really thin slice it down. And actually there is headphone out here if you really want. And then there's headphone volume if you really want. And there's aux in if you really want. All in one box. So that's what they mean by simplified. Uh, this thing is a flipping tank. Now, one thing that I disagree with is that they call this a pedal. In my view, pedals have on-off switches in ways that, like, you can be playing through this and you, you have, like, your dirty tone or whatever, and then you're like, okay, and then for this part, click, and then it's off, and then stop, and you click back on for it some more. There is no stopping and you know, all that stuff. It's literally dip switches if you're gonna, or dials or whatever but you don't stomp on anything. So this is just when it's on, it's always on until you pull the plug. So sorry to be a semantic purist, but in that way, I just don't view this as a pedal. I view it as a device. So that's my semantic argument. Anyway, here it is up close again. So you can stare at it and pause your screen and do whatever and be like, what the hell? But I do not regret it one bit. Now, what I do regret, which is why it's gone, is getting the Kaleen Wine Cellar. Now, not to completely crap on it, what I'm going to say is it was helpful. And I think I said so in the video about it when I talked about it. Is I was trying to get an understanding of like how to shape my tone and what kind of tone I'm after. Um, and that did help me in that way when I used it. But it just wasn't worthy of the stage. So it was fine for here. A lot of things are fine for here because I'm not on stage. The chips are not down. It's not crunch time. <laughs> um, and so things can kind of be okay or bad or whatever, but it's not hurting anybody. I took the Kayleen to a gig and brought it instead of my amp. And so, okay, this is going to answer the question about getting used to going direct to the PA. And I'm going to use my weekly gig as the, as the place to be the, the testing ground for that. And the Kaleen was awful. I mean, incredibly awful. It was so underpowered um, that there was just, I, I would have been better off going directly into just a direct box than I would have been going through that thing because it wasn't doing anything for anybody. It was actually underpowered in a way that it just was just worthless. <laughs> There's just no nice way to put it. And so I, I, it was the one-two punch between that happening and then me finding about, about the direct to the board with the Tech 21 DI where you have a little more knob twiddly action going on where you can really shape your tone more than just a direct box. And that's what led to getting this. So, but that's, that's part of the creative process. I think it's going to happen. You're going to get gear and stuff that uh, you're trying it out, you're testing it out, you're not sure, you're going to see what this is like, and then you're going to discover the pros and cons and hopefully you discover it in a place like here and you don't discover it on stage in front of a bunch of people. But 
me personally, I'm evolving day by day and bit by bit and ridding myself of the things that aren't relevant and bringing in the things that are. So one thing as a side note, just because they're sitting right here because of my different viewing angle that I decided to set up today for this video. I got my three bases and I got my one guitar. <laughs> the guitar is a whole nother video. Um, happy to report two out of the three of these are paid off and one's on its way to being paid off completely. When that's done, I'm basically done buying bases. Arguably, I could get a five string, but there's been no immediate gun to my back to get one. Uh, but I've got a space available if it comes to that, but I'm basically done buying bass guitars. Um, there's been that YouTube thing that happens where it's like a, a vendor will come up with some something or other and they'll send it to a bunch of influencers and then they'll all chat it up and that's your feed for like three days is nothing but that thing. And so the thing that's been going on lately is the Harley Benton uh, jazz bass that they're plugging. And I will say it looks beautiful. Um, and I did look it up and it's like just under 200 US and then to have it shipped it's like 260 to Florida. Uh, to Florida. <laughs> uh, but I good old Lobster did a review of it and I the minute he did his typical lobster pattern on it uh, I was done with it I was like I there's there's no there's nothing new here for me other than it's nice looking I've got nice looking I don't need this thing so no it's you 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 need to give me more than it's nice looking so I'm not I'm really not Mr. Guitars on the wall behind me and stuff like that for a reason. You know, I want to concentrate my firepower on, okay, this is, I got P bass and two jazz, I'm fine. Um, beyond that, I just, there's just no incentive. So that's kind of like a little bit of an insight to where I'm at right now. Uh, the hard key was the right decision. It continues to be right, the right decision. If I hadn't have bought it, I'd have a Mark base. Absolutely, hands down. Uh, but I bought the hard key with the intent of I'm not going to keep buying base amps. I bought these bases with the intent of I'm not going to constantly keep trading them out. I traded out to get to these. So that's the point. In fact, it was funny. I just had one of those Facebook memories. And every base in the picture that was taken at the time doesn't exist anymore in my life. The Schachter is gone, the Music Man is gone, the uh, the Donner is gone. So, but that's the thing, I worked my way up to these. And my argument is, when you got a Zomatis, <laughs> I mean, where else are you going here? Like, what more of this do you need to do? <laughs> So anyway, like I said, just kind of a little bit of an insight into like where my head's at. Um, as told in the previous video, I've got a band now. We're actually playing a show this coming weekend as of this filming. Uh, and so we're really excited. Uh, we're really nervous about our first time like saying that we're actually doing a show. But it's, it's just, I, I view it like... A, training camp for football and stuff like that, like they'll have those scrimmages. I view it kind of like that. We're not ready for like the big time to like do an all night 6.30 to 10.30 show or whatever yet, but we're working up to that. We're still building up our set list and making decisions about what we're doing. But that's the goal is to be able to do stuff like that. But this scrimmage that we're doing where it's just a seven song set um, will get us out of practice and rehearsal mode and into performance mode and I'm really counting on that to happen so all that to say look down in the description um, or possibly across the bottom of the screen here 
I check out the new, new, new band channel. That's where all that band content's going to go. It's not here anymore. Um, and uh, check it out. Um, follow our, our journey from bubble world to the stage. <laughs> um, we're really, really looking to be gigging uh, consistently. I'd say by April 2023, I think is kind of a realistic goal right now from where we're at currently. Uh, we're not noobs, we're not idiots, it's just we're a new band and we're still uh, working out the actual show. And there is a show, is the thing. Um, so, anyway, more on that on the other channel. More coming up here on this channel. Told you there's a guitar to talk about and why it's sitting there and what's going on with that thing. Anyway, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Keep learning, keep playing, and I'll catch you in the next video.